Hi, I'm Mike Stanton from Build America Mutual. I'm here today with Mark Capel from the West Coast office in San Francisco to talk about the Fresno Yosemite International Airport's upcoming sale of about $105 million of general airport revenue bonds. The bonds will be sold in a negotiated transaction led by Raymond James. Mark is the lead underwriter in this transaction, here to talk about the credit and how uh, he approached it. You know, Mark, one of the things I think is interesting is that in, in the way BAM approaches the airport sector, um, we don't just look at airports, we break it down into the kind of the types of traffic the airport has. So where does Fresno uh, sit? What kind of airport is it? Fresno Airport is a, considered a small hub by the FAA with about 1.1 million employments, and it services a local air trade area of, generally speaking, Fresno County uh, and some surrounding counties. Um, air trade area immediate air trade area is about 1.1 million uh, population and then about 2.2 million for the larger air trade area. So as a small hub, what does that mean for how you approach the analysis? What what kind of data points are you looking for and, and what did you learn? We're very focused on the revenues and expenditure side of an airport of this size. Um, airline revenues in particular are something that we focus on. Uh, those include landing fees and terminal rents. And in 2022, those rents and, and landing fees generated about 9.7 million, about 28% of their total operating revenues. Uh, concessions is another big line item, and that generated about 16.5 million, including about 10.2 million from parking revenues. Um, what's interesting about parking revenues here is they now represent about 30% of the airport's total operating revenues. Uh, and that's a significant amount of non-airline revenues that we would, would point to as a credit positive. I'd note that the parking revenues basically doubled to that $10.2 million number um, over the prior, you know, recent prior years, uh, where it was down due to obviously the decline in uh, employment activity, but also the introduction of a new parking garage that was completed in 2021. And that's uh, positive because it, it shields the uh, the bondholders from the performance of any specific airline. It's still tied to the traffic through the airport. That's exactly right. Uh, there's also some you know, sort of me near or immediate term funding that the airport received, which were focused on uh, some COVID relief funding from CARES Act, from SIRSA, as well as from ARPA. And those combined uh, to about $27.3 million. And the airport used about $8 million of that in fiscal year 21, about $7.8 million in 2022, and intends to use the remaining $11.5 million over the next two years to support its operations. So let's go a little bit deeper on that. You know, one of the things we always do in the under, you always do in the underwriting process is take a look at stress tests and and you know really the whole airport sector underwent a stress test the last couple of years through the COVID period, initially shut down most air traffic and air travel. Um, what did you learn as you look back on, on the airport's performance during that period, how it's recovered? Well, the airport performed very well, uh, surprisingly so, I think, in that it maintained a very strong uh, cash balance, 584 days, days cash on hand in fiscal year 22 alone. It also currently has about 42 million in what's called its surplus fund balance, which is available uh, cash and liquidity going forward. Um, you know, and the performance of those revenues kept what's called the cost per employment ratio relatively low at about $8.57 in fiscal year 22. Um, that will probably go up over the next few years as the debt service costs increase. But uh, simply put, uh, coverage in, in fiscal year 22 was quite strong of debt service. Uh, and based on projections, it looks like fiscal year 23 coverage will be about 3.3 times. And that declines by fiscal year 28, according to sort of the base case analysis, to about 2.2 times, which is still obviously a very robust uh, coverage level. Before we sign off, you did look at the competitive landscape, right? So, you know, you, you took a look at 96% you know, of the traffic, I think, is is either coming to or, or, or departing from Fresno. But you took a look at uh, options for other airports. What, what does that landscape look like? Well, that's a big competitive advantage this airport has is, you know, the sort of underlying, the, the rapid recovery of employments, 30.5% uh, decline in 2021 and 2020 due to COVID. And now the airport has surpassed those pre-pandemic levels with 1.1 million employments in 2022. Uh, that's an 18% rise over its prior peak in, in fiscal year 19. Uh, and a, a, the bulk of that could be assigned to the fact that there is no significant near, nearby competition. Uh, it's really two and a half hours to the nearest um, sort of um, competing sized airport. Uh, and I would say lastly, 
The introduction of Southwest Airlines to the airport in 2021 uh, is a significant and positive boost to uh, sort of employment and, and airline activity going forward. Great. Well, thanks for the uh, the time and all these insights, Mark. Uh, have a great day, and we'll uh, we'll see you on the deal uh, in the future. Thanks, Mike.